Richard Vobes is a conspiracy theorist. That's just about the least controversial thing I might say about the man. He is a man who promotes conspiracy theories. He is a man who promotes people who promote conspiracy theories. And he really doesn't care whether they're true or false. He just wants to get more conspiracy content out in order to get attention, because that's ultimately what Richard Vobes cares about. He has the loosest possible relationship with consistency. Take, for example, this episode he put out a few weeks ago. It features a man who claims to have been inspired by the energetic principles discovered by the Serbian inventor Nikola Tesla. But only a few weeks before that, he put out another show featuring this gentleman, who claims to be a historian, who has discovered that the Serbian inventor Nikola Tesla never existed. It's almost as if Richard doesn't care uh, which side of the debate he's on. He just wants to get as much attention as possible by creating as much controversy as possible, uh, really by talking nonsense. And we're going to see another demonstration of that today, because in this episode, Richard is rehashing one of the oldest conspiracy theorists there is. It's been going since the 1960s. Do you realize that fluoridation is the most monstrously conceived and dangerous communist plot we have ever had to face? It's the idea that fluoride, when added as a supplement in trace quantities, is somehow harmful. It's been associated with all kinds of alleged harms, none of which have ever been proven true. But that isn't going to stop Richard Vobes kicking up a big old hissy fit over, really, something quite minuscule. This is a fluoridated milk scheme. Blackpool Council, it would seem, uh, want to put fluoride into milk and then give it to children. Can you believe that? All Blackpool primary school children in years one to six are now able to have fluoridated milk as part of the school breakfast scheme. What do they want to do? Kill them? What do they want to do? Kill them by optionally allowing children to drink milk at breakfast that has been fortified with trace quantities of fluoride, a, a mineral that is required in very tiny quantities but can improve dental health by allowing teeth to recalcify? Oh, what a terrible idea! You can tell this is a very slow news day for Richard Vobes because Blackpool Council first announced this in 2016. That's almost a decade ago now. So I suppose the time to get upset was long before this additive was proved entirely safe and beneficial. Richard just hasn't bothered to keep up with the medical news. And I think this is a theme we're going to see repeated today, because Richard really doesn't care about what the reality of the situation is. He doesn't care what scientists know and how they found it out. What he wants to do is have a good old complain about something that is actually providing huge and tangible benefits for most of the population. Because fluoride in milk helps to keep teeth healthy. This is a, such an old claim. This is a very old claim. Dentists have known since the early 20th century that in parts of the world that have low levels of fluoride in the water supply, tooth decay is more common. The opposite was found to be true in areas that were naturally fluoridated. So it didn't take dentists a long time to figure out that fluoride might have some kind of benefit to dental health. It was also discovered that having too much fluoride could also cause a problem. There's a, a symptom called fluorosis, which is often manifested as brown staining on teeth. And that is the result of having far too much fluoride in one's diet. So there's an optimum level too little, you get cavities. Too much, you get fluorosis. We only need a tiny amount of fluoride in our diets per day. Something like uh, one microgram per day. It's, it's an absolutely tiny quantity, which is why the amount of fluoride added to the water supply or, or that milk drink that Richard is upset about might be less than one part per million. It's really just a trace quantity to 
get that recalcification effect that keeps teeth stronger for longer. It's really quite a harmless thing, which is why Richard is struggling to find more reasons to complain about this quite sensible health program. It's free and it's of no cost to parents. Oh really? So if you're going to give kids arsenic just because it's free and it's no cost to parents, would you give it to them? That isn't what's happening here. This, this is not like people murdering your children. This is a nutritional supplement program that provides a small number of children who are part of this breakfast scheme with milk that has been enriched with a trace element. That's literally all it is. It's not like giving children arsenic. It's not dangerous. In fact, it's nowhere near as dangerous as what Richard Vobes would propose to do if anybody was dumb enough to entrust him with even the smallest amount of authority. Why drink pasteurised or homogenised milk, standardised milk? Why not give them raw milk, which has the healthy bacteria in? Richard Vobes is a conspiracy theorist, and, and so we ought not to be surprised when he says particularly stupid things. But this really is stupid, even by the very low standard set by Richard Vobes, because he is proposing that what children ought to be drinking at school is raw milk, unprocessed milk, squeezed directly from the udder, in which every pathogen present at that moment is poured delicately into the churn and then sold at a farmer's market. And that's the sort of thing that, as an adult who consents to this process, I can choose to do and enjoy. But it really isn't the sort of thing that we should be feeding to malnourished primary school children, for a very good reason. And that reason is that it is illegal. It would be considered completely unsanitary, and any school choosing to follow Richard Vobe's advice would find their cafeteria shut down very, very quickly. Hopefully before any of those children found themselves victims of uh, an unpleasant food poisoning. But even this idea seems like pure sanity compared to Richard Vobes' next milk-based proposal. And if you're going to give them milk from, say, one, why not be natural? Mum's milk would be the best, I would have said, rather than fluoridated milk. That is Richard Vobes' plan. He believes that the, the kind of milk that ought to be served to five to twelve-year-old children in the primary schools of Blackpool should not be the enriched long-life milk that we discussed earlier, this perfectly harmless product, but it should be a raw milk product, not derived from cows, but pumped from the breasts of human beings. An entirely new milk industry that Richard Vobes imagines ought to exist for the benefit of these children that he evidently believes are being poisoned by the kind of normal milk product that you can buy in supermarkets. That's what he actually believes. And you know what? I ought to end the show there now, because that is perhaps one of the dumbest things that a conspiracy theorist has ever said. Oh. But unfortunately, I cannot end the show. Not yet. Wouldn't it be better to give them things like real vegetables, go to farm shops and eat real meat, rather than all the rubbish that you get from the supermarkets, which this doesn't seem like such an unhinged idea. The idea that we should source our children's food from the best possible producers in order to give them healthy, nutritional food that is balanced in every conceivable way. But, of course, in order to do that, councils would have to fund the schools. And in order to fund the schools, councils would require income themselves. And in order for that to happen, people like Richard Vobes would first have to pay their council tax. And that's a thing that Richard Vobes has often bragged about not having to do. Where does all the money come from? You know, how do councils get the money to do these things that Richard Vobes thinks ought to be done? Everything he says is wrong and unhinged. And the problem is, he is part of the problem. Richard Vobes and people like Richard Vobes who follow Richard Vobes and do what Richard Vobes say. If you want children to eat good food, then do not listen to Richard Vobes.
But wouldn't it be better not to give kids all that nasty sweets and sugar infested food to begin with so that their teeth can actually grow in a normal way? What Richard Vogue seems to be arguing here is that children should be less like children and more like Richard Vogue's, a 63 year old adult man. Specifically, he thinks that children should like the same sorts of foods that he likes. And generally, Richard Vogue's likes to eat freshly picked vegetables that he sources from local farms in the Worthing area. He likes to eat freshly slaughtered meat uh, from maybe similar high quality local producers. And he thinks that children shouldn't like spangles, sherbet fountains and tunnocks tea cakes, the, the sorts of foods that apparently children in the 1970s generally ate and, and maybe still do today. Uh, but that's an entirely pointless argument because children will eat what they get their hands on. Children love sweeties and really no matter how hard parents try, you can't stop them eating this stuff. Children just do what they do. Uh, so it's an entirely dumb exercise in wishful thinking that seems to be based on absolutely no understanding at all of what children are and, and what their nature is, which is, it's hardly surprising that apparently even though Richard Vobes has children, they generally don't talk to him anymore. And if you're one of Richard Vobes' children watching this, I'd love to know your story. It, it must be completely bonkers. But let's see how Richard Vobes develops this completely banal argument into something monstrously, catastrophically stupid. We weren't drinking fluoridated milk when we were in the Neolithics. And in fact, if you go back in time, you realise that people had better teeth then than they do now. So if I'm understanding Richard Vobes' advice to that Blackpool school system, what he is suggesting is that the Breakfast Club children should in fact be living like a Neolithic community. And that means foraging for their own food, such as uh, berries and wild vegetables, hunting and killing their own game. That could be uh, caribou, roe deer or wild boar. And maybe, if they're lucky, they might also have access to the early domesticated cattle, uh, from which uh, their milk could be drunk from an earthenware jar. That is Vobes' prescription for dental health. Uh, dental health really doesn't seem to be a thing that he's actually all that bothered about. 31% of five-year-olds in Blackpool have tooth decay. Every year, 400 kids are sent to hospital to have their teeth removed, yeah? Well, maybe that is a message. That is a big message to say the stuff you're eating and ingesting, uh, maybe even the stuff you're breathing or the water you're drinking is not fit. It may have absolutely nothing. So why put another chemical into the mix? Like all conspiracy theorists, Richard Vobes likes to tell us to do our own research. Don't take what he says on face value. Simply use it as the, the jumping off point for a lifetime of research. Become as invested in the facts as Richard Vobes himself claims to be. And now we'll see just how Richard Vobes does this research that he likes to talk about. What it actually consists of is searching on Google until he finds the first website that confirms all of his personal beliefs. Here's a website I found pretty quickly, Healthy Focus, Seven Proven Dangers of Fluoride. Seven Proven Dangers of Fluoride, an article that appears to have been written by ChatGPT that doesn't cite any of its claims and is basically published by a website that neither I nor Richard Vobes had even heard of before he began searching for this uh, confirmatory evidence that he so desperately sought. The, the evidence he found, though, is as suspect as we can imagine it might be. He's found an article which apparently claims that fluoride, far from being a, a, a useful trace element that we need to sustain healthy teeth, it is, in fact, a deadly neurotoxin. There it is. Um, the article was published in The Lancet in 2014. Put fluoride in the same category as other harmful chemicals, including lead, mercury and arsenic. The website Healthy Focus does not cite its sources. 
And neither does Richard Vobes, but that didn't stop me finding the paper that they were referring to. There really was a 2014 study that examined the neurotoxic effects of living in a area which had a water supply that exceeded the fluoride toxicity level by about two to three times. And you won't be surprised to learn that in addition to developmental anomalies, those children suffered a whole range of other problems. So we really don't want to do that. We don't want to poison people with fluoride by providing way too much of the stuff. But if you happen to live in Blackpool, which is a city that has a water supply which is not naturally fluoridated and is also not artificially fluoridated, you might find that uh, children might not be getting enough of the stuff. So they really do require a few micrograms uh, of the stuff every day in order to get that recalcification effect that keeps those teeth relatively cavity free. I think that's basically what Vobes is misunderstanding on purpose. Is that why we're seeing many of the children at the moment with things like ADHD or learning difficulties or autism? Is that what's going on? And now you want to put it into their milk? Have you gone raving mad? Richard appears to be arguing that because nobody has disproved the idea that just popped into his head that ADHD was caused by fluoride in the water, therefore, ADHD must be caused by fluoride in the water. It's a completely bonkers jump of reasoning that, that has absolutely no coherence and only makes sense to a, a conspiracy truther. This, in fact, is truther logic because he's basically saying, unless something has been disproved to my personal pleasure and nothing could ever be disproved if he wants to believe in it, then it must be true. Think about how many thousands, hundreds of thousands of years we have been on this planet and we didn't have fluoride coming from some industrial process shoved into the water or shoved into toothpaste. I can't work out which is wronger. Is it Richard Vobe's ideas about history? The ones we just heard then. He's nostalgic for the lifestyles of Neolithic people because, apparently, their water supplies did not contain industrial additives. Uh, their toothpastes didn't contain the same fluoride additives which he thinks are poisoning people. Or is it his notions about biology? The, the idea that, that he now believes that women who live in areas that have high fluoride, whether natural or artificial, might be passing this substance that he believes to be poisonous onto the babies that are suckling from their teat. I mean, if you're drinking mother's milk and you're drinking ordinary water and your mother's drinking water, you've probably got fluoride in it anyway, which is going to be doing some harm. You, you know, we are being poisoned left, right and centre. It's like Richard Vobes has run out of even semi-plausible reasons why we might be fearful of fluoride in our foods and our, our water supply. He really has nothing. So he's forced to come out with twaddle like this. Uh, he believes that uh, we ought to be afraid of fluoride because it um, does something to our pineal glands. Number five, fluoride impairs the pineal gland, the pineal gland. Never managed to pronounce that perfectly well. Uh, your pine pineal gland is a tiny gland, big function when it comes to brain. Of course, it also connects you to source if you're spiritual. If Richard Vobes was even slightly interested in the notion of truth or consistency, he wouldn't do what he does. For example, Richard Vobes, somebody who is not particularly spiritual, he, he's not a believer in any kind of religion, he wouldn't be saying what he just said, uh, the, the allegation completely unproven that uh, drinking water that is fortified with trace quantities of fluoride might do something to your pineal gland which might uh, interrupt your spiritual relationship with the cosmos. A completely bonkers idea that Richard Vobes doesn't even believe in himself. And yet he says it. And what does that say about Richard Vobes? Is it that he holds everybody in such disregard 
that he is happy to just talk crap. J just, he's bullshitting us all. He's gaslighting everybody. He's saying things confidently that even he doesn't believe in. He, we can all see he hasn't done the slightest shred of research. This entire 15 minute monologue he's done for us consisted of nothing but him recycling a conspiracy theory that he'd heard previously and then reading an article that he'd only just found. It's the lowest effort of nonsense that you can imagine. That is how much Richard Vobes disrespects us. But it's also a sign of what Richard truly wants, what he wants most in the world. You must be brainwashed to understand this fluoride will protect you from everything. And if it's from the government, we know, whoop, turn it the other way round. Fluoridated milk is big N-O-T, not safe to drink. Oh, but it's safe, they say. Yeah, but that's the government. Come on. Get real, ladies and gentlemen. Avoid fluoride like the plague. It really is a nasty thing. So that's Richard Vobes' argument. An argument made by a man who left school aged 16 and had no further scientific education after that time. And Richard Vobes is presenting this argument to his own captive audience on YouTube. An audience which is predominantly also scientifically illiterate people, people who have no background in the kind of subject that Richard Vobes appears to be pontificating about. So it's the ignorant riling up the ignorant. He, he is a, a classic rabble rouser who appeals to people who are just as ignorant as himself. And what does he want these people to do? The, these people who really know nothing at all about the subject that they are now profoundly angry about. Well, Despite the fact that these people are predominantly old age pensioners or almost of that age, he would like them to uh, write to their MP, the authorities, anybody who will listen to them in order to complain that the children of Blackpool are being poisoned uh, and evidently have been poisoned since the year 2016. And apparently nobody but Richard Vobes has noticed. If you live in that Blackpool area, I would certainly be writing to your MPs. I would be writing to the government, to the council, that they are killing our children. They need to be told that we know the scams that they are doing. That's my opinion. It is just an opinion. You may disagree. You're very welcome to disagree. Thank you very much, however. What a kind and thoughtful man Richard Vobes is, because he has granted us the permission to disagree with him. We are welcome to disagree with him. He has uh, magnanimously offered us that leeway of free thought that uh, we can uh, think different things to, to what the Vobesmeister evidently thinks. So we might, for example, check the, the death statistics in that city, Blackpool. In fact, we might check the statistics in the entire United Kingdom and come to the conclusion that not one child died of uh, fluorosis in the period that is causing Richard Vobes concern. We, we might therefore come to the conclusion that absolutely everything he said is disproven by the, the simple fact that fluoride is not killing our children. This is just a, a bizarre hyperbole that Richard Vobes is resorting to to get his audience of idiotic nincompoops riled up, to get them to, to cause trouble, to, to write to their MP, and, and generally cause a fuss, because that's the kind of thing that somebody like Richard Vobes loves to see. When people are doing what Richard Vobes asks them to do, he's generally happy, because it means he is controlling the narrative. He is the center of attention. And that is what he always wanted. That's what he only wanted. He wanted to be on camera. He wanted to be at our hearts. <laughs> and that's what he's getting. Oh, Richard Vobes, you awful, awful man. You're making people afraid of things that are generally quite good and useful. I've always said about truthers, like Richard Vobes, as long as we vibe with them, they happily see us bombed into the Stone Age. They don't care about anything to do with human progress or, or how we as a people, a, a, 
the human race has progressed from Neolithic times to the modern era and, and how we have comforts and, and useful inventions and we all live longer, happier and better lives. Richard would throw it all away just on a whim, on a vibe. That's the kind of guy he is. And that's why I can't stand the man. Oh, Richard, when will you ever stop giving me content that I can use to make more episodes of Mind of Steel? You know what the answer is? Probably never, at least not for a very long time, because Richard has shown no signs of slowing down. Because the next few episodes of Mind of Steel are all planned out, and they're all being sourced from crazy idiotic things from the Richard Vobes channel. I'll see you in a week.